So we've talked a bit now about Java streams. Before we go much further, let's just sort of recap whether they're a win. What, what type of win, if any, do they give us? What are the benefits of using Java streams? So there's several key benefits that Java streams provide to programs and perhaps more importantly to programmers who program programs. That's what a programmer does. And so let's talk through some of these benefits. To make the discussion a bit more tangible, I'm going to refer to a case study that we'll probably have a chance to take a look at in a couple weeks in more detail. This will just be a teaser. This is the image stream gang case study. And it's actually a bit like some of the stuff you've been doing for your programming assignments, but uh, does it in a slightly different way. It doesn't have a cool flashy GUI. It doesn't have as cool of a flashy GUI. And what it does is it downloads, transforms, stores, and displays images. Gee, that should sound similar to your, your web crawl. <laughs> and if you think about what it's doing, it, you give it a list of URLs to download, a list of transforms to apply, and it takes the list of URLs, turns them into a sequential stream, and then goes ahead and will get rid of anything that's not already been cached. So if, if you cache the images, they're already there. No sense getting more, getting them again. So it skips over the ones that are, that are cached and only downloads the ones that are not cached. So we use filter. We then download each image from the remote web server. We use flat map to go ahead and apply the transforms to filter the images or apply transforms. I don't think you like to use the word filter because that's confusing with the intermediate operation filter and streams. And then finally, we take the results of downloading and transforming and storing the images, and we put them in a list, and then they're displayed. So that's basically the idea here. And the nice thing about this, as we'll see in a second, is once you sort of know how to read streams, you can kind of understand this code by reading it top to bottom in a linear scan. So what's one of the benefits? Well, in light of what I just said, it's fairly concise and readable. And the reason for this is that, a, that the declarative paradigm, which is what streams gives you, focuses on what you're doing, what functions, what methods to perform, and it abstracts to some extent from the details of how to perform them. Of course, you ultimately have to perform them somehow, but when you look at the top level stream, you can see that we're really focusing on the high level stuff. Take the URLs, turn them into a stream, get rid of things that are uh, already cached, download stuff, apply filters, turn them into a list. We can read that top to bottom, have a pretty good idea of what's going on, of course, there's implementation details in each of these behaviors, but we can address them when we need to. And the way I like to visualize this, because again, I love to visualize things, is it's like an iceberg where the what, which is the declarative part, is the part sticking out of the water. It's the visible part. And the how, which is the means by which this is done, is hidden. And there's a lot more how than what. Now, this is pretty cool you know, when you program, because you want to focus on what you're doing and not always focus on how you're doing it. If you are the captain of the Titanic, maybe this is a bigger problem. But uh, we're not worried about that right now. We're just thinking about how to abstract away so you don't have to worry about all the details all the time. Notice something else here. There are no Java control flow operations in this stream. You don't have a for loop. You don't have a while loop. You don't have a do while loop. You don't have an if statement. You don't have a switch statement. It's just a nice linear sequence. So, why that's helpful is because you can, again, read this thing from top to bottom without having to sit there and make your mind jump back and forth and do iteration and branching and all this other good stuff. And that, of course, is what's baked into these intermediate operations. Like filter is like an if statement, but you don't have to write it that way. This whole stream thing is kind of like a loop, but you don't have to write it that way. So it abstracts away from those control flow operations, which are sources of complexity and confusion. Another nice benefit of streams are they're flex they're, they are flexible and composable. And the functions or the methods can be automatically and fluently connected together. So again, like the water filtration system that we've talked about before, you can chain everything together. And in particular, again, without at the risk of saying something we've talked about multiple times, the output from one operation, from one intermediate operation like filter is then piped, using that word loosely, into the map operation, which is then piped into the flat map operation. These things all come together in a nice, fluent way. It's easy to see. It's easy to understand. It keeps things very nicely structured. And you can plug and play in all kinds of interesting ways. Something else that's super cool, which is really going to be the big focus after we get through Java streams at a high level, 
is we can parallelize the performance without the need to write any multi-threaded code. So notice all we do here, well, we do two things, but at the first glance, all we do is we go from saying stream up here to parallel stream. And then boom, everything runs in parallel. Kind of cool, right? However, there's a slight little tweak here. Because our original implementation had used flat map, and I mentioned this in an earlier discussion, flat map does not work effectively with parallelism for mysterious implementation historical legacy reasons. What you have to do to get the same effect and make things run in parallel is you have to replace flat map with a pair of calls. You replace flat map with map, and then you add reduce stream concat. And that works quite well. But it's a slight little tweak. You just have to know the magic incantation. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a class at Hogwarts. You have to know how to say um, whatever the incantation is to make this work properly. So that'll then run nicely in parallel. The common fork join pool of worker threads is applied to process all the behaviors here in parallel. Remember, the way it works is that each thread does all the things that are in the pipeline of intermediate and, and terminal operations. We don't do it layer by layer. We do it top to bottom, left to right, not left to right, top to bottom. So, but it, everything runs in the common fork join pool, which is nice. And of course, as we've learned from our discussion of the common fork join pool, that maps things down to the underlying processor cores using all kinds of clever optimization techniques. In fact, if you look carefully at the solution, you'll see it uses the managed blocker stuff just like we're doing in our programming assignment. So that's the end of the overview of the benefits of Java streams. So the key themes are concise, readable, flexible, composable, and scalable. Those are the, some of the key things you get by using a streams model rather than programming in the more traditional way using for loops and if statements and the classic object-oriented features in Java.